The guy is, um, yeah, <laughs> Alexandra is, is not doing well. She has no pawns influencing uh, white half of the board. And the <laughs> this is great. He's asleep and, and like, and she looks pissed off, but I mean, he can sleep because he's completely winning in the game. Like, <laughs> doesn't even matter because he's winning in the game. So he, he can be asleep, but he's, he might be old, but he's got a winning position. So it doesn't matter. All right, let's take a look. What what happened in this game? Um, we have we have um, we have c4, e5. So we get an English played by Dietmar Kolbus. Okay, he plays d4. I mean, it's a little bit weird this opening. I feel like knight f3 allows e4, but I assume Kolbus was assuming that that Botez doesn't know any theory. She doesn't know how to play c6 or knight f6 or d5. Which I mean, if she doesn't play the English, which or if she doesn't play e5, which I don't think she does play most of the time. It makes sense that you try to trick her with a move order. Okay, all pretty normal. Bishop d2. Knight d4 takes. Okay, this looks pretty. White's already much better, by the way. White already has a classic Maroxy bind setup with the pawns in the center on e4 and c4. Very, very nice position for Coldless. Very nice. This is what we call the Maroxy bind. Black already doesn't have much space in the center. White can always go f4, g3. Really, really nice position. Computer already gives it as 0.8 for white. Not surprising. There should be two castles, all normal. f4, nice move. Rook c1. I don't know about rook c1. It looks a little bit strange. I'd probably put the rook on d1 or e1. But I assume the idea is that he thought he could play like knight d5 and then open up the lane for the rook. Maybe. So c6 is played, not a good move, because now it just creates a perma weakness on d6. Knight c8, a4, good move. White just has complete control here. White has a big center, a lot of grip. Black has no pawn pushes. b5, d5 aren't playable. Really, really tough position to play. I, I think already white is probably close to winning, and we're only on move number 16. Um, yeah, this is move 16, and already it's completely winning for white. So b3, f6, a5. Okay, so she plays b5 already here though this is horrible for black big weakness white's getting a bastion she goes here blunders and peasant and now black is simply lost yeah e5 okay queen e2 not best but good enough c5 white gets the protected pass pawn weak pawn here totally over totally over um i mean he kind of misplays it just a little bit but man he hate trade takes game over yeah yeah i mean I, I don't know what you guys want me to say i mean just a complete wipeout complete wipeout colbus just absolutely blew her off the board i mean she was lost on move 16. completely lost before the game even really began so again the source without even looking at this game i already said this but it speaks very clearly to what i said before which is that at the lower levels you don't know your openings well enough to the point where you can just sort of coast off of them and so when you don't play chess and you're DKing and then your openings are DKing as well, it's just a complete disaster. So, I mean, yeah, I, I don't know what to say. I, I, don't, I don't know what to say. I could say the truth, but if I say the truth, everyone's going to be mad at me. I can sugarcoat it. Everyone's going to be mad at me anyway. It's what it is. Um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, it's just, this wasn't even, this wasn't even competitive. Wasn't even competitive. So, yeah. What else happened in Reykjavik? I guess I can take a look at the other games. Uh, were there any other games... That were interesting. Let's go back. Um, Vasil Ivanchuk was playing. Uh, looks like he won his game. Tari is playing. Gupta. Yeah. Anna Kramling. I, who does she play? I guess she was probably on one of the boards that was relayed to, right? Velenkaya, Kolbus. Uh, I can just control F, right? Kramling. Uh, oh, she played. She lost too. Okay. Who did she play? She played against, um, oh, she played this GM Tr Tremitios. I played this guy a million times in Arena Kings. This guy's very good, by the way, Tremitios. Much better than 2357. But let's see how this game went. So what do we get? We got, okay, we got a Catalan. Pretty standard stuff, okay. 94, F5, Castles, 95. Of course, I myself played this 94 F5 line many years ago against Wesley So in the US Championship. Um, it's reasonable. 95 is definitely not the way for white to play. This definitely isn't the way to play. But anyway, bishop takes, okay. Beast. Oof. Bad move here. 
In this position, Black should probably play Knight D6, forcing White to make a decision like Knight F7 or takes takes. So you have a connected chain. You can go to F7 or back to E4. Yeah, Knight, e, Knight B6 is just a horrible move because now you're going to end up yielding the C file, right? Takes. Yeah, and Queen C6, and already you're just lost. Move 16 and Anna Kramling also completely just can just resign almost. Yeah, rough. Yeah, and it's again. People can say what they want, but at the end of the day, I know what I'm talking about when I say that it, as you don't, when you don't play and you don't study openings in both these cases, they both just get blown away. And 16 moves are both completely lost with the black pieces. Um, and that's, that's why it's, it, you can't just, you can't just stream and try to play top level tournaments. If you're, if you're below a certain level, cause it's just not, um, it's just not possible because you're decaying too much. And it's just the reality. Content creators were his chess voice. Yeah, but see, the thing is, everyone then goes and watches me. They see me do it. They think, oh, yeah, it's not that hard. He does it. We can all do it, too. Um, anyway. Okay, so Queen E8 played here. Um, Rook C7 takes, takes, takes. Okay, I mean, there are, there's, I feel like this guy maybe misplayed this a little bit, though. I feel like he misplayed this just a touch, though. Because this feels, this should be winning, right? Eh. I mean, I, I guess here, computer wants to go, what, E3? No, it wants B5? Yeah, it feels like somehow somehow some mistakes were made by by White, but Anna can't really take advantage of it. And now he, gets, he just starts pushing P on the queen side, and it's just game over, right? Rook D1. Queen E3, good move as well. Takes, and then Rook E1, and now, yeah, you're just down you're just down two juicers. Two juicers, too much, and it's just game over. Hikaru, I feel like you secretly put way more work into chess than you let on. I don't, you guys. But brutal, 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 brutal stuff. Um, brutal. The difference is you are playing guys like Daniel Bornick every day, so you don't lose your touch, and you probably still do a lot of work with the trainer. Thanks so much to Popo Popo Man for the five gifted subs. Thanks so much to Popo Man. Pushing P on the what now? Pushing P. It's a TikTok meme. Pushing P. But yeah, again, a brutal game. She just gets blown away in 16 moves. I mean, just rough. Um, what else do we have? Uh, someone said fear loss at 2200 but I, I didn't look at that close I, I didn't see that pop up um yeah so it looks looks pretty normal Dina won um, that's not surprising um I mean Dina Dina when she's when she Dina however is significantly better than either of them I mean Dina was like a 2350 ish player at her at her peak I think a little bit higher than where she's at now like she legitimately was quite strong so I am not surprised that she she did well because because she is a much better player than either of them Okay, Bishop about four. Bishop about four is just a ridiculous move. I don't. What is Bishop about four? You're supposed to put the Bishop on e3 and go c3. Bishop d3. Yeah, Bishop about four is weird. But I mean, this whole knight a6, knight c7 also kind of a little bit su suspicious by uh, by by Dina. But I, I assume because she's just a much stronger player, she takes advantage. Okay, and now she gets Bishop d5, and already here. Without white being able to push P quickly on the king's queen side, black should be fine. Although I do think white is still better here, most likely. Bishop f4 again. I, another move I don't understand. What is this? What is this fascination with this bishop f4 move? Very, very strange. Yeah, now she gets a knight d5 trade. Great op on d6, targeting this diagonal. Rook g8. And now rook g4. And this is probably going to be easy. I bet there's f5, f4 with rook g8. Right? f5. Takes. Okay, h4 doesn't even need well now she finally gets rook g8 and okay yeah and this is just winning okay very uh, very strange i feel her as a london player i also want to play bishop f4 all the time yeah i mean that is one way of looking at it of course <laughs>